So we've got this documents problem. We know that Donald Trump stole literally hundreds, if not thousands, of top secret and classified documents. He brought them to his home in Mar-a-Lago. He, God knows what he was planning to do with them or what he's already done with them. That said, the National Archives said, hey, you got some documents. We need them back. So he packs up 17 boxes and sends them back. The National Archives says, whoa, 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 you've got a bunch more. We want them back. Donald Trump and his lawyer says, oh, no, no, we, we don't have any more. In fact, his lawyers wrote up and signed an affidavit to that effect. Well, of course, the FBI went in, searched his residence at Mar-a-Lago and found another 20 boxes of top secret documents. Of those top secret documents, there is probably 40 um, folders that happen to be empty. Interesting. We still don't know if we've gotten back all of the top secret documents from Donald Trump. So there's an investigation, likely to be some indictments coming soon. But uh, we just can't have anything nice anymore in this country. Because, of course, there are some documents found at uh, Joe Biden's think tank and at his home. You know, we're talking about maybe 12, 13 documents compared to thousands of documents that Donald Trump held. But, of course, the Republicans are trying to equivocate those two things, saying that what Joe Biden did was just as bad as what Donald Trump did. Fact is, there's a vast difference in what's going on here. Donald Trump stole these documents, purposely stole these documents, then tried to hide them, then lied to the DOJ and the FBI that he had them. Joe Biden's people came up with these documents and immediately turned them over to the National Archives, which is what you're supposed to do. In any of these kinds of crimes, if they are crimes, it involves a lot with the way with the way you look at it as far as intent. Clearly, there was no intent by the Joe Biden administration to steal or take these documents. It was either a mistake or something else. Donald Trump, on the other hand, his intent is clear, too, because he flat out stole them and lied to the DOJ. But still, the Republicans want to equivocate those two things to create chaos and murky the waters about what's going on here. Try to take attention off of Donald Trump. Well, that won't work. Now, the White House has pushed back on Republican outrage over the discovery of the classified documents at Biden's residence. Uh, calling uh, for indignant. <laughs> All right, let me go back. Calling for the indignation of GOP lawmakers. They call it shamelessly hypocritical. And that's, you know, frankly, that's what the fuck it is. It's it's hypocritical. But that's not out of the ordinary for Republicans at this point. Now, Ian Sams, he is a White House spokesperson. He said, House Republicans have no credibility. Oh, no shit. They can't even get along with themselves. Half of them are insurrectionists. Yeah, they have no credibility. Their demands should be met with skepticism, and they should face questions themselves about why they are politicizing this issue and admitting that they actually do not care about the underlying classified material. I think there's another question to ask. I mentioned it early in the podcast. These are classified or top secret documents. They're supposed to be kept safe. They're supposed to be kept in secure rooms, skiffs. But all of a sudden, we've got top secret documents all over the fucking place, all over Mar-a-Lago, New York, now in Delaware with uh, Joe Biden's homes and, and, and think tank. Who's dropping the ball here? How did the it's one thing to hold people responsible for having possessions of these things, but how did that happen? Why is there not more security to these documents if, in fact, they are so important? We've got to look at Donald Trump for his crimes, we've got to look into Joe Biden and see what happened there. But we really need to look into the National Archives, the DOJ, and find out how this fucking even happened.
Put it this way, if I want to grab a top secret document, how easy is that going to be for me? How am I going to get it? Am I going to get into the White House? Am I going to go to the National Archives and say, yeah, I'd like to check out those top secret documents? Of course, that's not going to happen. You and I couldn't fucking get top secret documents. So how could they? How do they get loose out into the world, into the ether where they're not supposed to be? How did it get there? So we've got to take Donald Trump to task. We've got to hold him responsible to his crimes. We also have to check into what's going on with this Biden thing, because this is a problem, too. I don't think Joe Biden did anything that was going to be illegal with him. I'm not even sure Joe Biden even knew they were there. And that takes me back to something I was talking about with with um, Tony Michaels yesterday. And I always I hate talking about this because it goes so against the grain of anything I would talk about. And it really falls under the category of conspiracy theory. But there are people who think these documents that were found on Joe Biden's property were planted by Donald Trump. On the surface, that sounds fucking crazy. That sounds like something I would say, fuck you, that's stupid, just shut up about it. But then you think about it. I'm not saying it did happen. But when you think of Donald Trump's entire life has been about blackmail, making money and getting power that way, you think about all the crazy things he's done and the Trumplicans have done in the last six years, and then all of a sudden it doesn't sound too crazy. But again, the question is, how do these documents get on Joe Biden's property? Well, then we have to look at the Secret Service. I know this sounds crazy, but we know we have a lot of problems with the Secret Service. We know Joe Biden says he doesn't trust the Secret Service. And we know that some members of the Secret Service are sympathetic to Donald Trump. Then we think about the 40 empty envelopes that were taken out of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. Well, where are the documents that should have been in those envelopes? Again, doesn't the National Archives have records of everything that has ever gone into the archives or should go into the archives? Shouldn't we know what was in those folders? And then Donald Trump starts truth socialing or whatever the fuck you call it and talking as if he knew what was in the documents that were found with Joe Biden. Now, remember what I've always said. Donald Trump will always fuck himself. He will always implicate himself. And, you know, he may be just talking out his ass. But he's making some suggestions or did make some suggestions about what was in the documents that were found on Biden's property. Now, if that is the case, how does he know that? As I've said, it's very easy to look at. Look at the dates on the documents. If they are prior to 2016, then they probably came from then Vice President Joe Biden. If af if it's after 2016, it has to come from the Trump administration because Joe Biden was a private citizen at that point and had no access to top secret documents. It seems pretty simple. It doesn't seem like it's too hard to figure out. So now, of course, we've got the Democrats all up in arms about how the Republicans are reacting to Donald Trump. And Tony Michaels made a good, um, good suggestion yesterday. Every case that they make against Joe Biden just further indicts Donald Trump because Donald Trump not only did something similar, he did something more egregious to what Joe Biden is alleged to have done. <clears throat> Now, the House Committee on Oversight and Reform, chaired by Representative James Comer, launched an investigation one day after the White House first disclosed that the lawyers had found several classified documents from Biden's time as vice president. Again, we have to question, was it from the time when he was vice president? If it was, then we've got to question Joe Biden. If it wasn't, then we've got to look into that. And of course, now Merrick Garland has hired a special counsel. I think that's a good thing. 
He certainly reacted quicker to Joe Biden's documents than he did Donald Trump's documents. But I think he's doing it to try to protect himself with the case against Donald Trump. He can't look like he's uh, favoring Joe Biden over Donald Trump. He's got to be fair. He's got to be straightforward. And that really is the best thing to do. If these were put in these locations by Joe Biden or, or people connected to Joe Biden, I think we'll find that it was a mistake or something like that. I mean, clearly, Joe Biden has access to all top secret documents now and had access to a lot of them when he was vice president, too. If he took them, what, in fact, is he using him for? Now, I will say this. If this special counsel ends up finding out something negative uh, by Joe Biden and these documents, well, they need to take his ass down. He is our president. I like Joe Biden. But if he did something untoward, we don't need that motherfucker in the White House. And as I've said before, what's crazy about the Republicans, if they truly want to get rid of Joe Biden, well, then they're going to have to contend with Kamala Harris. And I don't think they're going to like that. But I will tell you this. There are some other people talking about conspiracy theories that this may be the Democrats doing this to ensure that Joe Biden doesn't run in 2024. I've said all along, I don't think he will run in 2024. He's going to be 82 years of age. And regardless of how well he's done in the four years he was president, it just doesn't make sense to put somebody that old in office. Um, I'm 62 and I've lost a step. At 82, I'm sure Joe Biden will have lost a number of steps. And it's about time that we get out of the era of the old white man. I've said this many times as well. The time has come that we need to have the era of the younger, more diverse crowd. Women, people of color, younger people. This is what we need. I mean, to be perfectly honest, the future is not ours. I'm 62 years old. What's going to happen 20 years from now really won't have an impact on me if I'm even still here. But it will impact my kids and it will impact my grandchildren, and they should be allowed to determine their own destiny. You would think, right? But these old white men keep holding on and keep grasping for power, and they're doing everything they can. We see that with the Republican Party. They're doing the gerrymandering. They're doing all these tricks, and they're doing anything they can to hold on to power, and they are struggling. Their time is short. As I've said before, by 2028, the boomers will no longer be the uh, majority that are voting in the elections. And that is going to be a problem for the Republicans. Now, these two entities, the Democrats and Republicans, can fight out fight about whose situation with the documents is worse. Clearly, it's Donald Trump. Because what he did was far more egregious. And there are investigations and likely indictments to come out. But as I've said before, I'm getting a little frustrated. I'm the one that always said, just wait, be patient, bide your time, and it will get done. And I still feel that way. I'm not a prosecutor. I'm not an attorney general. I don't know what goes into this whole process. And I'll grant you, if you're going to indict a former president or even sitting members of Congress, you need to be cautious. You need to do it right, because if you fuck it up, you're done. Merrick Garland will be gone in an instant, and all these people that committed crimes will get away with it. We certainly don't want that. But the time is quickly coming that something needs to be done. We need some action as soon as possible. We're two years away from the 2024 election. We don't want to get a year out and say, oh, we can't do anything now because we've got an election coming. We've gone through a midterm election. We've gone through the holidays. We've done all the shit we're supposed to do. And now is the time we need some fucking action. So now's the time we need to put the pressure on Merrick Garland and Jack Smith. I presume we're looking at some action here sometime soon, but we don't know that for sure. We kind of have to wait and see. And that's, you know, that's what we'll fucking do. 
It's a pivotal moment in this country right now. When some of this stuff comes down, we are going to see a big shift in this country. I can feel that there's a big change coming in this country. And frankly, I see it as a positive for this country. I mean, it can't get any worse than what it was the past six years. Things go in cycles. They are bad, but uh, as as it, what, what's it said in the Bible? And and this too will pass. And that is true. Everything passes. In my lifetime at 62, in terms of politics, we've had some scary times, some terrible times, some corrupt times. But we've always gotten through them and come out the other side and generally been better off. That will happen here too. As much as the media will try to tell you all is lost and democracy is gone and all the people that believe that bullshit, in spite of them, they'll all be wrong. This too will pass and we will be fine. But that's not to suggest we don't put up a fight. And again, like I talked about earlier in the podcast, that's the whole point of the Rational Boomer podcast, to give people more information, more ammunition to fight against those people that will lie to you and try to bully you and try to um, gaslight you. Tired of this shit. That's the most frustrating thing for Republicans whenever I talk to them, because I'm telling them things they don't know, facts they have no clue about. And then they become stymied. They don't know what to fucking say. And then they get mad and say, oh, you're mean. I'm mean because I told you uh, the facts and are holding you accountable to the facts. Well, that's how they act. That's how bullies act. The moment they're pushed back, they claim victim. If we really want to know who these Republicans are, there was something yesterday that really describes them. And it should be a red flag to us as to just how dangerous these people are. They're not just criminals. They're not just corrupt. They are purveyors of violence, and they are dangerous. And we should know that. We should accept that. And we should be willing to respond to that. You know, it's one thing to be careful and to be um, concerned about doing the right thing all the time. But if we as a people are in danger— Desperate times call for desperate measures. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about. Well, police in Albuquerque, New Mexico, arrested a gentleman by the name of Solomon Pena. He's a former Republican candidate for the State House of Representatives, and he was arrested on Monday in connection with multiple shootings at local Democratic politicians' homes, authorities said. This is a guy who's a Republican running for the State House of Representatives in New Mexico. He lost. And guess what he thinks? He thinks the elections were rigged. He thinks there was election fraud and he didn't actually lose. Well, I wonder where he got that idea. All started with Donald Trump. And now every time a Republican loses, oh, the, the elections are rigged. It was stolen from me. And it's one thing to say that and go to court like Kerry Lake and all this other bullshit, but you knew somebody would take it to a further extent. And this Solomon Pena decided he was so mad that he'd go with a gun to Democratic politicians' homes and start shooting. That's who these Republicans are. That's what it can get to if we allow it, if we don't do anything to hold them accountable. Albuquerque Police Chief Harold Medina or Medina said Pena is accused of conspiring, conspiring with paying four other men to shoot homes of two county commissioners and two legislators. He was arrested after a brief standoff with the local SWAT team. So not only did he grab a gun, he hired four other people. Now, this is a conspiracy. This is a terrorist attack. And this is a Republican who is butthurt because he lost a state election. 
The department is investigating at least six shootings, six shootings which occurred between December 4th and January 5th. Four of those have been linked to Pena, police said, and two others are still under investigation. But you know he had something to do with it. It is believed that he is the mastermind. I hate that term for Republicans. There is no mastermind in Republicans. They're all dumb fucks. Medina said at a news conference on uh, Monday that uh, he believes <clears throat> that Pena was the mastermind nonetheless. During one attack on December 11th, at least 12 bullets were fired at a county commissioner's home. The Albuquerque Journal reported that. Now, during another shooting on January 3rd, multiple shots were fired at State Representative State Representative Linda Lopez's home, including three bullets that went through her 10-year-old daughter's bedroom. Why are we just hearing about this now? This happened early December. We're in mid-January now. We hadn't heard about this. Now, all of a sudden, they've had enough shootings out there. They go, hey, we may have a problem. And it's a fucking Republican who lost an election. So Pena launched an unsuccessful bid for New Mexico's 14th House District in 2022, losing not a close one. He lost by 47 percentage points to his Democratic opponent, State Representative Miguel Garcia. The Albuquerque Journal notes that Pena has continued to dispute the results of the race, claiming election fraud. Claiming election fraud. You lost by 47 points. You honestly believe there's election fraud or you believe you can bully your way into office. And when that doesn't work, you decide I'm going to grab a gun and shoot people because I'm angry. Fuck you. Fuck you. Now, he faced criticism during his bid after Garcia filed a suit to disqualify him from office over a 2008 conviction for stealing in a smash-and-grab robbery. He served seven years in prison, but a judge ruled that local laws barring convicted felons from office was unconstitutional. Unconstitutional. A guy does a smash-and-grab robbery, spends seven years in jail, and it's unconstitutional for him to run for office? Well, there's yet another problem we need to look into. Those types of people should not be in a position to run for office. Neither should people that are indicted, like Tony Michaels was talking about yesterday. Some of these people in Congress could get indicted and still stay in office. Well, how is that possible? I don't deny that Tony Michaels may be right about this, but that's a problem. That's a big problem in this government. If criminals can run for office, win office, and continue to commit crimes, we, we need to work this out. That's a fucking problem. You're probably uh, not surprised to hear that uh, Donald Trump is going to extremes to grift money. A lot of his money is drying up. Because people are tired of sending him money and not getting anything in return, not fighting to get him put back in the awful office. Nothing he said he's going to do with the money he's collected thus far has come to fruition. Listen to this one. This one is interesting. Donald Trump's presidential campaign is under fire. <laughs> yeah, by many different people, many different uh, legal authorities. But it's under fire after a local news anchor from Florida accused the organization of sending out a fundraising email that appeared to be from Governor Ron DeSantis. But the Trump campaign says the email is fake. It's a slick fundraising email, tweeted Spectrum News 13 anchor Greg Angel on Monday, noting that it included the Florida governor's campaign logo, photo, and all. But check the fine print, he continued. It's a fundraising email actually for Trump PAC and presidential campaign. Always read the fine print. Now, of course, the Trump organization is saying, oh, that's a fake thing. Somebody's just trying to set us up. Well, that's interesting because he'd already tried doing this before with Herschel Walker. Remember when the Senate runoff, he sent out a letter as Donald Trump trying to uh, uh, 
fundraise for Herschel Walker, presumably. Well, that was a nice thing to do. But again, if you read the fine print, it showed that 90% of the money raised would go to Donald Trump and 10% to Herschel Walker. So the idea that he might be using Ron DeSantis to fundraise isn't crazy because he's already done it once. A former popular president using a very popular governor to raise campaign cash. Imagine that. Not the first email like this. More and more it shows Governor DeSantis' orbit of power and influence, his gravitational pull in the GOP. The allegations prompted a flood of reactions. Uh, somebody said, Trump is impersonating DeSantis in his fundraising email. A highly doubtful Team DeSantis signed off on this. Not a good sign for Trump of 2024's campaign. He's having trouble fundraising on his name because his name has been sullied by all the investigations and all the potential indictments. So the only way he can get money now for his campaign, which he will never mount, he will either not be allowed to run for president or he just will not run. He's having so much trouble raising money that he has to pretend he's Ron DeSantis. How do you think Ron DeSantis is going to react to that? The over and under on DeSantis campaign sending a cease and desist letter because this, said former Trump attorney Jen Ellis, is definitely going to happen. But Brad Pascal, a former Trump campaign manager, claimed that the fundraising email was fake. You should confirm things first, making more fake news like as usual, he said in a response to Angel's tweet. It's fake. It's fake. Somebody other than Donald Trump's people sent it out. But the money goes to Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time believing that. Alexander Bruschwitz, a conservative political strategist, also alleged that the fundraising email was fake. But he placed the blame among allies of DeSantis. You see, this is the same argument when they said that it was Antifa attacking the Capitol on January 6th. Why would Antifa attack the Capitol? Why would Nancy Pelosi want to interrupt the certification of a Democratic president? You see what I'm saying? It's fucking ridiculous. It makes no goddamn sense. So now they're trying to do it here. Oh, DeSantis is just doing this to make Trump look bad. Nonetheless, Trump is getting money off of this fucking letter. It's it's absolutely absurd. It's immature. It's stupid. And it's exactly what you'd expect out of Donald Trump. Brushwitz wrote on Twitter, this is fake. No official Trump PAC sent this email out. Pro Ron DeSantis 2024 surrogates are spreading this lie all over the place. Well, no Trump PAC sent this out. But somebody under the cover of darkness, somebody covertly did this for Donald Trump. And is that so surprising? Donald Trump doing corrupt, criminal, covert, under the uh, table type of shit? That's not crazy. And he's desperate for money. So what are you going to do? You're going to try to get it off the back of Ron DeSantis. And now I don't care about Ron DeSantis either. I'm just loving the fact that Donald Trump is fucking over Ron DeSantis, who then will fuck over Donald Trump. And they'll be so busy fucking each other over that uh, the Democrats will win in a walk in 2024. The Trump campaign later outright denied that it had sent the email. <laughs> Trump denying something that never happened. <laughs> How many things has he denied? He denied stealing documents. And then he told us he stole documents. He denied being connected to Russia. But Russia meddled in 2016 to benefit Donald Trump. Donald Trump's good at denying things. He's just not very good about being honest about it. 
The Trump campaign later outright denied that it sent the email. That's hilarious. The fundraising email is fake and did not come from us, Trump, Trump campaign spokesman Stephen Chung told Semaphore's Shelby Talcott. <laughs> of course he's going to deny it. Donald Trump and the Republicans deny every fucking thing. They don't own up to anything. It's absolutely absurd. And you would think after all this time and the many, many times they've done this, people have figured it out. Even the Trump fucks have got to say, my God, what's going on here? Now, if the people in Florida find this out, obviously this is going to be problematic for Donald Trump in any future election, especially the 2024 election. See, that's the problem Donald Trump has here. Because of who he is, when he fails, he refuses to admit it. The 2020 election is proof of that. He knew he lost. He knew there was no election fraud, but still he complained about it and bitched about it. He will never, ever give in to the fact that there was no election fraud in 2020. I promise you that. He will never, ever admit to that. And in this situation, stealing Ron DeSantis' logo and try to fundraise off that, he will never, ever admit to that. But that should be evidence enough, based on his history, that he did exactly this. Because all he does is deny, deny, distract, delay, divert. That's what he does. That's the only strategy he knows. He does criminal things and then says, no, I never did that. Even if you watched him fucking do it. Now, it's real easy to figure out if he did this, that money had to go somewhere. Where did the money go? So are you telling me that Ron DeSantis's people sent out this letter and then had them send money to Donald Trump just to make him look bad? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I bet that happened. Fuck's sake. I, you know, we really are at a point where we need to stop this shit. It's laughable. It's almost ridiculous. We have to do whatever it takes to shut these fucking fools down. They make this country look foolish. They cause nothing but chaos and uh, problems in our government. And we've got some big issues we've got to deal with, but we got to listen to bullshit like this. I hope this pisses off Ron DeSantis, and I'm sure it will. And I hope he does something in return. You know, maybe what he could do is get a uh, a plane and put all the Trump family on the plane and send them to fucking Lincoln, Nebraska or something, just like he did with the uh, immigrants. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'm enjoying how the Republicans hate one another. They won't have time to hate the Democrats. Donald, If Donald Trump gets to 2024 and there's some indication that he might run, the fight between Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump will be so loud and so annoying. Whoever the Democratic president is, a presidential candidate is, will win it in a walk. I think that's going to happen anyway. There's no way over the next two years the Republicans can do anything to look good enough to win any fucking election. So it may take two years to get to the point we need to get to, but it's important that we expose Donald Trump all the Trump fucks, the MAGA people, anybody that follows these people, expose them for the ridiculousness, make fun of them, just do whatever we can to shut them down and uh, question their integrity. Because they have no integrity. We know that. It's, <laughs> you know, if it wasn't so scary and didn't have so much effect, on negative effect on this country, it would be hilarious, but uh, I don't know. All right. We're ready to wrap up the Rational Boomer podcast. I want to thank you for spending the time to listen. I hope you have a great day.